Hi, I'm Renee Ritchie, and I'm a tech analyst. I'm Georgia Dow, and I'm a psychotherapist. And welcome to Apple Talk, where, what do we do again? We talk about technology and psychology and human nature and how they all intersect in a grand explosion of technology and us and mayhem and... Well, that part's true. Yeah. It's been a minute. It's been a, We haven't done this for a little bit. No, no, no. We're no. back, though. Yes. You tried to get rid of us, yep. but we came back. Well, you didn't, you didn't post videos for like a month. I did not post videos for a month. But now you're back. I'm posting videos again, what did, too. what did you post? I posted on Black Widow. I did Loki and Black Widow. Oh. Woo oh. and narcissism. Oh, was it about me? If <laughs> I was going to say, if you think it's about you. No, oh, I thought it was about me. You should watch I the video. I probably think this video is about me. <laughs> I'm so vain. Probably think this video is about me. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's, it's true. It's true. It's damn true. Uh, yeah, so today we are talking about the new mindfulness app right. for the Apple Watch. Yes. Also, uh, Samsung's desire to get all your personal data through your washing machine, dishwasher. Everything. They'll take anything. Yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe some right to repair stuff. And then Maybe. in our bonus segment, we're going to talk about, no spoilers, but we're going to talk about Black Widow. Spoilers. No but spoilers. That's a spoiler. No, your video is a spoiler. This ah. one's going to be the no spoiler. Okay. They, then they no can choose. Spoiler. They, they can choose. watch this, and then once they have partaken of the widow themselves, they can go watch the spoil, like the the instructional, the analysis. Instructional. The analysis video. How to be Black Widow. No, it's more about. Isn't it the family dynamic? Yeah. No, okay. I was just, I was, All right. I was oh, just okay. Lying. Yeah, Georgia will teach you how to be Black Widow. Kicks and everything. So Apple, as part of, did you watch WWDC yet? I did. You did? You finally watched it? I did. I might have watched the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> you had a bit of a June. I had a little bit of a June. You had a bit of a June. a little bit of a June. Yeah, so I watched the, um, you know, WWDC dub dub in 13 minutes or something. <laughs> oh, I know. Okay. I know. All right, let her know what you think about that in the comments. Um, ha ha hashtag what Georgia? Something Georgia. I don't know. Hashtag catch up Georgia. We'll see. Yeah. Um, Judge. Judge Georgia. <laughs> Judge Georgia tapping her watch. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that Apple announced was Watch OS 8, and part of that was this metamorphosis. The um, Breathe app went into a little cocoon and came out a beautiful um, mindfulness no, butterfly. Sorry. Butterfly, of course. Moth. Moths are so mundane. Not all moths are mundane, okay. by the way. I'm just going to take offense to that. All right. Some moths, like the, the Luna moth and the Atlas moth, are more beautiful than many butterflies. I loved you on Bones. You were so good. Um, all right, Hodgins. Uh, but, all right, so I, I was thinking like a monarch butterfly, but whatever. It came out as a mindfulness app. And one of the things that they did, well, they did several things, some under the, under the hood, but a lot of them in the interface, was to expand from just breathing to a whole set of activities, including uh, this reflection mechanic. Right. So why don't we go into why? Okay. <laughs> why is this even a thing? What is mindfulness? Okay. It, it's kind of like one of these catchphrases that everyone kind of wants to jump in on. Mindfulness and it's going to cure everything and, you know, make bacon for you and fry it up in a pan. <laughs> I just figured it was like Yoda, where he's like, always your mind on where it wants to be, never on where it is. It's, it kind of is. Okay. I know that sounds really bad, but it is a little like Yoda. Okay. Ma okay, so breathing app is about training your breathing to calm down. And that works for some people, but for some people actually focusing on your breathing can cause you anxiety instead of lower your anxiety because your anxiety may be linked to the manner in which you breathe. And so for some people, even having your heart rate and your breathing being monitored is a source of anxiety. So let's break that down then. So what are the positive aspects of breathing? Like what can you get out of it? Okay, so we're breathing all the time, yes. But when we are anxious, we're doing short little tiny chest breaths, whereas where we are sleeping, we are doing long deep belly breaths. So by just even by starting to do short little breaths, we're building up carbon dioxide, which senses danger, which then sends a signal to our brain saying, things aren't okay, maybe I should send adrenaline. And then you're like, no, actually I'm fine. But then you keep on doing that short chest breathing, which can bring on a panic attack. So, so it's like ancient times, T-Rex is attacking, T-Rex is attacking, run, run. It's like a snake eating its tail. Like, you know, feeling anxiety oh, okay. can cause your breathing to be bad. Having your breathing being bad can cause you anxiety. If you're actually having to run from danger, this is the kind of breathing that you want to get ready so that you'll be faster, but in a t state of 
wanting to be calm when there is no danger, you do not want to start this off. And because modern society has inverted all of our basic instincts and turned them against us, we now breathe in an anxious, non-Qigong style manner all the yes. time, and then we think we're in fight and flight There all the is time. less flight danger than there... Fight or flight. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. Snicked or bamf. One of those two things. Yes. In, in X-Men parlance. Um... I don't know if Banff is flight, but Banff okay. is night crawler. He teleports away. Wolverine uh, is claws. He fights. That'll do yeah. it. No, I got the snicked. Okay. I got the snicked. Okay. Um, Hashtag I got the snicked. Oh, what the, the, the show will be called. No one will understand okay. or click on it. With three <laughs> views, um, which will be like three. That's not bad. Three more than usual. Three more than usual. Um, so, yes, because we've never had, we've, there's never been less danger in the world ever yeah. in our existence as a world. But we're aware of all the danger at but once. But now we're aware. Yeah. The internet has given us this opportunity to be constantly propelled in our yes. brain that there is danger around the corner. There are ninjas everywhere, which is kind of cool, but yeah. not if they're coming after you. There's more COVID cases and in so Bangladesh. There's more COVID cases it's, in, it's, in uh, the Netherlands. Everything, yeah. everything, everything is about to kill you. And that heightens our sense of awareness, which increases anxiety. And so that's where the breathing app is good. But in some cases, focusing on your breath for some people causes them anxiety. Okay. Um, and one of the other things that... Uh, and it's a little boring. That Apple was saying, yeah, is that some people also just didn't want to close their eyes and do sort of deep breathing. But you don't have to close your eyes to do the bre deep breathing. So I don't understand how that's actually a thing. Maybe some people think they have to. Maybe, but you can still do your breathing yeah. with your eyes open. I do because I'm worried about the ninjas that you just mentioned. Right. Now I'm doubly fair, worried. Fair, fair. Uh, so they, they have more types of that, and then they have reflections, which gives you an idea. Like it'll say, think about something good that happened to you, or think about a person that was kind to you, yeah. or think about something that made you, that you experienced today. And then it gives you a minute, and sort of like this lava lamp animation to look at while you're reflecting on it. So, so these are all little tiny pieces of mindfulness. Mindfulness, in comparison to just breathing, mindfulness is about living in the moment. Being in the here and now and trying to ground yourself into where we are now, instead of thinking about the what ifs of the world, the future, the past, because anxiety lives in the future, regret lives in the past, we live in the here and now, and that's what this application is doing. It is teaching you to focus on something nice, keep your brain nice and positive, pay attention to what you smell, what you hear around you, um, focus on, you know, how your body feels right now, put your hands on your belly and feel how your heart rate is or your breathing is or your belly is at this time. And these things are really nice aspects of mindfulness. Not a full set of mindfulness, they're little pieces of mindfulness, but they can help ground you and lower your levels of anxiety because it's telling you there are no ninjas. Yeah, and that's interesting because like in the Qigong that we've done for a long time, you basically had a Dantian, like, which is like a little bit lower than your belly button, but the same general area of it. So these are just like best practices these for mindfulness? Are, yeah, these are, we, yeah, little tiny pieces of teaching you mindfulness, being in the moment, paying attention to your surroundings that are right now, and it stops your brain from saying danger, 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 which causes anxiety. So anything that can change your focus and keep it onto things that are pleasant and happy can lower your levels of anxiety. One of the things I thought was interesting too is they made a whole separate set for people under the age of 13 because they don't have the same sort of object permanency or uh, forethought. So instead of saying like, uh, like, instead of giving you something to think about during the day, they have you do something more in the moment, more in the now. Yeah, and, and I think that most kids could actually, like up until the age of like eight, nine, could do the mindfulness app as it is now. It's just not as much fun. They made it a little bit more fun for okay. kids to do. And I think that that boredom level is one of the things that happens. Okay. For younger, for younger people? Yeah, it's, it's well, it, it's the I same mean, it's thing a long time, Georgia. <laughs> it, it is when you're doing something that you, like, it's not as fun as a video game. Yes. So who would want to do this? I, I have a really hard time. I have some of my younger clients that are able to do breathing and mindfulness and other things, and most can't. If it was on a video game, like they do for um, ADHD training and ADD training of, like, you know, you have to try to, calm your brain down yeah. and your plane is flying depending on how calm you are as you're working on those centers of the brain, which work really well as brain training. Those are more fun because you're playing a little bit of a simulated video game. So they're making it more entertaining. Yeah, yeah. No, that all makes a lot of sense. And the other thing that I thought that was 
was it's counterintuitive for me. And we've joked about this, like I'll be super stressed and trying to get something done and the Breathe app will pop up and say, take a minute to breathe. And I'm like, can't you tell I'm busy and I'm stressed? And I'm, oh, yeah, it's a good time to do that. But they found- But I won't <laughs> and I will turn it off. Uh, so, yeah, no, sometimes, yeah. But the, what they found is <laughs> that um, instead of doing more machine learning, like instead of trying to predict when people would want the, the breathing app, people didn't like that. They wanted to be able to schedule it for certain times, like have really granular manual control. Like I drop my kid off, or I pick my kid up every day at two o'clock. So at like 1.55, I'm just waiting there in line and I want the breathing app. Or they would try to see if there was like a meeting invitation for you and then not have the breathe app. People were like, no, I'm bored to death in this meeting. I'd love to do my breathing while I'm in the back of the room and everyone else is exactly. yapping. Yeah, in a way. Exactly. So now you get to decide. Yes. And I think that it's counterintuitive, but we don't, it, it's really hard to get good at breathing or even mindfulness when you are stressed. So it was triggering it when you were at your most stressed and most people would just turn it off because I'm the most stressed right now and definitely, definitely do not want to take a minute to more than a minute on breathing right now. The better thing to do is to train yourself when you are calm, you can be able to do with it. So I think that what Apple did was a really great idea because it's just a scheduled time you can practice. And then, because these are skills, not tricks. Tricks you can just do in a yeah. second versus a skill you have to practice, you know, a thousand to 10,000 times before you're good at it. You practice it all the time. And then naturally when you get stressed, these two pieces are linked up and you can go, you know what? I want to feel more calm. And then you can go into breathing naturally without even thinking about it or being able to place your mind somewhere else. Um, migraines and headaches are another thing that are really good for um, mindfulness and also for, um, you know, doing different types of guided imagery. Yeah, I had a two-day migraine a couple weeks ago and I just sat in the dark for like two days. That's horrible. <laughs> then you take medication. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, so if people are really interested in, in using the breathing and the mindfulness aspects of the new, of the new mindful app, what are like the best practices? What, what are your, what's your advice to them on how to get the most out of it? Well, the first thing that I would do is schedule it for a time when you are relaxed and you can really focus on it and practice it. You want to read through it and try to, you don't have to be perfect at it, but you want to try to do what they're saying. So if it asks you to focus on say, you know, what are you hearing right now? or how do you feel right now? You want to allow yourself the space to be able to do that. We're not expecting um, you know, a trained 10 year um, yoga practitioner amount of focus. You're just trying to get better at it. So I would just go through it, yeah. see how you feel about it. And doesn't matter if you do it or you don't do it. And then you feel more comfortable. There's less anxiety because a lot of people feel anxiety when they have to perform something for the first time that they've never done before. Yeah, the cool thing though is like, cause we did it for a long time, is that after a while, it's one of those things where you can get into that state faster and faster. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, it takes a long time to get into that, you know, for lack of a better word, that Chan state, that Zen state. But after you've been practicing for a while, you can do it. Like even now, um, when we were learning this like a decade ago, I, it, it just, it happens very, very fast. Yeah, and then not only that, it, the effect is, is better and better. So you're actually producing um, serotonin and you can feel it. And I, when I do my breathing or if I do a focusing technique, I can feel the dopamine. I get a little bit giddy. And so I'm actually creating that neurotransmitter that makes me feel motivated and happy and also calm and relaxed. Yeah, I do it before my videos and then I can focus way better on my videos. I don't do it before videos, maybe I should, um, but I do do it before I do a speech or a talk. I will give myself a few minutes, I do my breathing, I put myself in the right mind st state and I say to myself, go out there, have fun. I give myself a little bit of a pep talk and that positivity is also beneficial. So now I'm picturing you like Vanderlei Silva just hitting yourself and getting all uh, no, I ready to fight be before a video. No, I don't wrapped up because if I'm wrapped <laughs> up, my brain goes limbic and then I'm not gonna remember what I'm supposed to say. And standing out on stage and not knowing what you're supposed to say is horrible. So instead, I want to, because I'm already so excited, I want to bring it to that perfect kind of level. So I want to bring myself down into that optimal level of anxiety. You know and who excitement. could have used this? Who? So a, a few years ago when we were at CES, they had one of the first Android dishwashers on, on the floor. And you and I walked by. And the PR person for Samsung was standing there talking to her technical assistant saying, this effing thing just keeps texting me. It texted me all night. It was just constantly texting me. I couldn't turn it off. It's driving me out of my mind. I want to kill this thing. And I was thinking that's, that's too many notifications. That's too many notifications. That's really when we've zombified the washing machine to zombify us. <laughs> but everything is getting smart. And you sent me this article about how 
everything is not only getting smart, but everything is becoming a data harvester. Like before mm -hmm. it was just like what websites you went to, what email services you subscribed to, what social networks you used. But now Samsung is, it, it, it wants, it, it's, it's using its washer and dryer to, in, to exfiltrate our information. Yes, and it wants all of it. So now your washer and dryer does not just want to know where your location is, which you could say, you know what, maybe not a horrible thing if, if you've set it to start when you've come home, right? But that's time zone based, that's not location based. I feel like that's a... It could be when I arrive home in the house or when I leave the house, I want the washing machine. Oh, the washing machine. needs to know my location. Yes. Okay. So it doesn't need to know its location. It's it still... wants your location always. That seems very little brother, always. very little sibling. Um, but then it wants your contacts. All of them. And these are not Why my contacts. You know, I, I have I have tried to figure out any reason that they could justify which they have not um, as of yet. They have not justify being able to request your contacts unless you have a family member that you want to be able to have access. Now, the machine, you don't need to have this app to run the machine. Okay. But if you choose to use the application, which, which is, is what you want for a smart device. Which you kind of want. Otherwise because, you get a dumb device. Exactly, because you want to be able to sit and watch TV and not get up to run the yeah. dryer for another cycle. And it's not that smart. It's not telling you, oh, your clothing is still really wet. Let's, oh. cause, like, wouldn't it be better just, yeah. keep on, just keep on going? Like, if you're going to do my job, do my job well. Um, so you might want to say, you know, run for a little bit longer. Like, really, what I want it to say is fold my clothing and put it away, please. Um, but I don't know why it would want to have your things unless you were saying someone else is going to be able to use it and they're going to send in from, whoa, I've done my laundry today. Yay, send to all your friends. There, there's no reason for this. This yeah. is completely mining. And the awesome thing, the thing that I'm so excited about is finally, finally, people are waking up, thank you, and saying, what the hell? Why do you want to have oh, my, all of this? It? Can I say it? Oh, are you? The line must be drawn. Yeah, oh. this far, no further. I will make them pay. That wasn't what I thought you were oh, going to say. say. I think was... other people thought other things like too. What? You can put it into the okay. comments. All right. Will you tell us yours later? No. Okay. All right. No, I'm not Good. going to. The, the thing is, so like, I mean, they figured out ways. Like, I am paranoid about sharing my location with any app. But then, like, Pokemon Go will say, "Well, if you give us your location, we'll hatch eggs faster for you because we'll be able to tell when you're traveling, even if the." even if the device isn't moving that, that, that fine grain, like, ooh, hatching eggs. And suddenly like, or Clubhouse was infamous for asking for your contacts and people would just do it because for them it was like, oh, then I can see when my, where my friends are, let me find my friends. But you're then giving Clubhouse everyone else's yeah. detailed Thank contact you. information. Yes, my contact information yeah, is Yeah, which is not yours to give yours. away. No, um, exactly. And you know, pe people were getting legitimately really angry about that. Yes. And now people are starting to pay attention to where their privacy is and what apps are asking for it and why and getting angry. Oh, thank God. Finally, people are getting angry instead of being the, oh, well, why shouldn't I well, give it to them? I didn't broke, do anything wrong. Jean-Luc broke his little ships. First contact. Come on. No, but I think it is a problem and it's a growing problem and because the pushback, I guess it's being covered in Vice, you know, which is not a small publication, but I think just it's a matter of convenience. And you've explained before that human beings, um, we care a lot about our present convenience and not as much about our future well-being. That's why, like, you know, nighttime Renee will screw morning Renee over every single time, every single even night. though I know better, even though it's happened yeah. over yeah. and over again. Yeah. It's like the Battlestar Galactica loop on Fast Forward. Yeah. And what they're asking for are um, contacts, telephone, Huh? Location and camera. Now, for the camera, they say it's for the QVC code. Okay. Okay. I, I don't so know why. So you can why scan a code to... To, I guess, register your washing okay. machine. But then you can't turn it off after. But that should be a system level thing. Like, that's probably an Android thing. Because on iOS, the camera does that on a system level. Like, it's, just, it's built into the OS. So you don't have to give the app permission. You can do the, the QR scanning on the OS level. It, it basically... That's one of the things that I like about... Like, app, you can argue a lot of things about Apple, but... They've built this mechanism where a lot of stuff is disassociated. So they will do something and then hand it off to the app, and the app has no knowledge of what's happening in between. Right. It just gets the code. They're, they've protected us for yes. us against 
these yes. creatures. But when it's the company doing it, like Samsung also makes phones. I'm pretty sure they're not going to really, like they just want the data. I'm, I'm sure they're going to protect you against Samsung. Don't you think that they would have enough data from phones they don't need to stick it into our washing machine? That's the thing, is it just seems greedy. But what if you have an LG phone and the Samsung washing machine? I know, Samsung they want more. I know, yeah. more is better. They can sell it for yeah. more. And that makes them be able to, um, you know, make more money. So I understand if I worked for Samsung, I would be doing this. Would but, you though? Would you though? Oh, I love the thought of, oh, I'm just so, you know, righteous that if I ran a company that could make more money, I would think of the people first. But most of us love to say that, and I don't think that that is usually true. On a baseline, we are all the same. We usually think about ourselves first and the world after. Some of us are really understanding that we think about the world, we are actually thinking about us as, as well and our future generations. But I think that that is a more new age, new generation thought process, whereas the old generation really was just grab everything you can. First you get the money, then you get the power, then you get the data. It's yeah. like watching your own little personal Dark Phoenix arc unravel right in front of me. Hmm. Hmm. Turn, that makes me happy. Costume turning dark red as I right, watch. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. So do we need, do we need to have all these devices be smart? They are certainly convenient, but it seems like the, the, prid quo, the quid, prid quo, pr, quid, pid, quid pro quo, quid, quid pro quo that they want uh, is again, it's like a, it's, I'm going to be such a movie cliche today, but it's like, I'm altering the bog and pray I don't alter it further. You know, yeah. everything is a deal with the Vader devil. Yeah, I, I think that eventually people are going to be, the, the devices that are not connected are going to become sought after because of how much data harvesting is happening through our devices without us even knowing. And the same thing for cars, and then it becomes all of this difficulty and everything's tracking everything that we do. And, I hope we uh, push back, but I fear we'll become complacent. We'll just become used to it. We'll be desensitized. Well, there is some pushback now. I think that people are becoming more educated about what their value is and you know, upset over companies that are trying to use and abuse us. And to uh, along those lines, uh, U.S. President Joe Biden has been exercising the power of the pen recently, not only in terms of competition amongst tech companies, but uh, pushing through some right to repair. Yay. Uh, proclam procl I don't know what the president, I'm not American, I apologize. I don't know what the president, does he proclaim? Is it a proclamation? Is it an executive order? I'm not sure. You can let me know in the comments what the proper American terminology is. But he's starting with farm equipment. People are really hopeful. It's going to go to technology products as well. But he's starting with like the John Deere tractors that you're not allowed well, to open. Those are so horrible. The, printer, the, print, yes. the inkjet printers of, of farm equipment. Yes. Yes. I think that that's wonderful. I think that that's a great start. And on Apple News, uh, the Waz is also now supporting right to repair for technology. Hasn't he for years though? I figured mm. like, that was his whole thing with Steve Jobs. Mm. He wanted the Apple to be like this open computing platform and Steve just sealed everything up inside the Macintosh. He, he, he wavered on that and now okay. he's fully kind okay. of uh, backed it. The wonderful so Wizard that of Waz. Is, that is really good. Yeah. So we have, you know. But so my fear with this stuff is that in order to get publicity, which I think is the most important thing in any political machination, they will say, we're gonna do all these things without paying any attention to how they are actually, or if they are actually implemented. Because like, it's easy to say you should have right to repair, but companies are smart and they're also controlling and they're also- um, Sneaky. Pro no, but they're also like, they're fiduciarily designed to seek out profit. And like it's, it's like we're not buying the commodity widget that we could easily supply to repair companies. We have our custom widget, and we don't even have enough to supply our own phones. That's why you can't buy an iPhone on day one. It's already out, you know, back ordered for three months. We can't get any extras for repair companies. So sorry. And then the executive order says, well, if you can't get any, that's just fine. Like, how, is it going to yeah, have any teeth? Is what I, I'm asking. I don't think that it will have teeth at the beginning. I think that we are going to have to alter rules as we see them because something that is glued completely together and you cannot open them, such as the earbuds and people wanting to change batteries yeah. and you really cannot. Um, you know, if iFixit's having a really hard time, then probably you're gonna have a really hard time too. But once these um, state, once these this legislation is put into place, then it becomes something that the onus goes on to the companies who do not want to be fined or legislated to a greater degree. And there's one thing that I hope comes along with this because we've seen this abused too, and that is, we've talked about this before, 
uh, theft of data to be treated like theft of anything else mm -hmm. because we've had not just like people often assume it's like indie repair shops. We've had like big box retailers and even Apple store employees like stealing people's data. Yes. And that should be treated like it, it is a crime, but it's not prosecuted to the extent that I'd like because you have all your most absolutely personal stuff yes. on these devices. So I think like along with the right to repair, I'd like to see real harsh penalties for anybody who abuses it. Yes. Yeah. I think that privacy is a huge deal. And if you're stealing my information on my phone, it should be the same thing as you stealing information from my house. Like you're stealing my wallet. So like you, yes. you and my medical, like all these things. Yes. Yeah, Which we have those protections illegal. for physical things. Add them to digital. Yeah. And then people won't hesitate. Because like a lot of people, like no matter what side of this argument you fall on, um, some people just don't have access. Like there's no Apple store in a lot of countries and there's no uh, authorized re like repair place. And you know, for any company, and you have to send your stuff off sometimes for like two weeks and a month, and it's really hard to be without a phone. And if you have access to a place and you don't, you don't have any sort of like doctors are certified, you know, like you have to, like, to be a therapist, you have to be certified. Uh, mechanics, they, they, everyone, like there's all this infrastructure in place and there's consumer protection laws and all these things. And as this matures, I just want all that built up as well so people will try going to whatever shop is on their corner. Yes, because they know that it's been Apple approved. Yes, or just, you know, government regu like regulate regulated that stuff. Approved. Yes, yep. that Screw would be. Apple, can you give me some regulation? That would be lovely. That would be lovely. All right, so we do have one more bonus topic for you, Black Widow. So yeah. if you're watching on Nebula, just keep watching. If you're not watching on Nebula, you can just go to curiositystream.com slash Apple Talk, sign up, 15 bucks a year, cost of a fancy New York pizza, and you get not only all of Curiosity Stream's documentaries like and series. Of fancy New York probably. Pizza, yeah. yeah, you get access to everyone on Nebula, including Georgia, whose videos are up I'm on Nebula. I'm there now. Yes, you Yay. can see all of Georgia on Nebula. And um, all of my videos, Marquez Brownlee, uh, Jordan Harrod, so many, so many really good people. Um, but if you're not going any further with us, Georgia, where can people find you? You can check out YouTube. It's YouTube slash YouTube.com slash Georgia Dow. Um, I'm on Twitter at Georgia underscore Dow. And if you're dealing with anxiety or depression, you can check out anxiety-videos.com. You can find me at Renee Ritchie on Twitter and Renee Ritchie, well, not Renee Ritchie, I'm doing the Georgia now. Yeah. YouTube.com slash Renee Ritchie on there YouTube. There we go. Thank Yay. you so much for Thanks watching. So long. Yeah. Rusty. <laughs>